Hi guys, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I wanted to take a second to talk about 3D toolpath containment and how to easily and quickly get the exact results that you're looking for when you're doing 3D operations. So here I have a simple example file that we're gonna to use to demonstrate this. And let's edit the setup and go ahead and you can see the work coordinate system where it's set to and let's go to the stock. You can see I'm using a relative size box with no additional stock. That means that the size of the stock and this, the bounding box of the part are the exact same size. Go ahead and hit cancel here. And if we click on the setup, I've got a, a 3D adaptive that roughs out this part and then we come back with a 2D contour just to clean up the end. So if I go to the setup and I simulate this with just the tail tool path, we'll turn the stock on hit play and maybe speed this up a little bit so we can see what's going on. So there's our 3D adaptive that's gonna go and rough that face. It's gonna go back to the bottom and finish those edges and then a 2D contour is gonna go around and just clean up the uh, radius on the end. So that leaves us this terraced face that we can come back with a ball mill and clean up on our surfacing operations. The operation that I'm gonna use to do that is going to be a 3D parallel. So from the 3D menu, I'm gonna select parallel and I'm gonna grab a tool. Now I already have this tool set up in this document, but if you want to use the same one for you, for a simple example for yourself, you, the tool I grabbed is from the tutorial inch and it's tool number 11, the half inch ball. I'm going to select that same tool, but out of my document and I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. Now when we get to the geometry, we have uh, different machining boundaries we can work with. There's three types of machining boundaries, bounding boxes, silhouettes, and selections. And one of the great parts about the Fusion Cam is if we just hover over something, oftentimes we get a nice tooltip with a uh, graphic flyout that kind of explains what these things are. So you can clearly see what a bounding box, a silhouette, and a selection are. What we want to use for this example is going to be a selection. And now we have to specify a machining boundary. So I'm going to go over here and grab on this edge. It's going to select the entire perimeter of the part, which isn't what I want, but we have an easy way to get around that. So I'm going to click on this once. It's going to turn that pro for that region green. When I put my mouse over that, it's going to turn red. When I see that turn red, I can left click on that region. It brings up that uh, pop-up UI now, and now I can just move my mouse around and reselect the path where I want that boundary to be. So I'm going to click over this line, and a very important step is to make sure you hit the green plus to lock in that selection. When I do, it gives me that selection and flattens it to the lowest point of the boundary that I selected. For our tool containment, we have three options. Again, nice tool tip here. We can keep the tool inside the boundary, we can center the tool on the boundary, or we can do the tool outside the boundary. Tool outside the boundary means that the tool is allowed to go outside of the boundary by one diameter of the tool. Tool center is what it sounds like the tool goes to the center and can't go any farther. And tool inside the boundary just means that the tool cannot, no edge of the tool can break outside that boundary that we've selected. So we're gonna use tool center on boundary for this particular example. And we're gonna come back and talk about some of the other options in a minute. Oftentimes with 3D adaptive, or I'm sorry, 3D operations, the heights tab is not important. Uh, it's going to use the region that we uh, specified tool center on that from the stock top to the model bottom and since it can't get outside of that the area that we specified that's going to be exactly what we want we'll move over to the passes tab now on the passes tab we have a pass direction anytime a tool path is asking for a pass direction the x is always i'm sorry the zero degrees is always lined up with x so the tool's always gonna go the long way when, or I should say along the X axis when zero degrees is specified. So I know exactly which way this tool path is gonna go. I don't have to hit okay to see what's gonna happen as long as I can see what my X axis is here. I wanna enter a, a step over of 0 0.02, 20 thousandths of an inch is what we're gonna do for a step over. And let's just go ahead and choose okay and see what our tool path looks like. So at first glance, things look pretty good. I recommend that you always simulate 3D toolpaths, especially when you're starting out, to make sure what's, what's, what you think is happening is actually happening. So let's click on this parallel and simulate it. I wanna turn on all toolpath, and I'm just gonna come over here down here. I'm gonna place my mouse over one of these points and click. Now let's look at this from the side. When I look at this from the side, you can see the tool is stopping short of getting the ball mill all the way down there. So it's leaving a chunk of material. And this is a big source of frustration for new users or people who aren't familiar with the 3D machining operations. It may seem like Fusion's not doing what we've asked it to, but it's doing exactly what we've asked it to. And to demonstrate that, let's go look at this from the top. 
when I look at this from the top, you can see the center of the tool is on the boundary that we specified. It just can't get all the way down to the bottom because to do that, the tangent of the tool would have to go farther out and that would get the tool center farther than outside of that boundary. So that's what's happening. There's another thing that's going on with this tool path. If I come and click on that point right there and look at it from a front view again, now what we'll see is that the tool's riding up over the surface and going up on the top of the part. I've either probably faced this or I don't really want the tool to go up on the top. Uh, maybe leave it in a tool mark or something up there. So I don't want the tip of the tool to break, the tangent of the tool I should say, to break contact with the surface right there. And uh, if I left click and hold, you can see what's happening. The tool's riding over the top and coming back down and riding back over the top and coming back down as it makes its passes. So let's go see if we can fix a couple of these issues. Switch this back to a home view. I'm gonna go to my parallel and edit that operation. And on the geometry, we're gonna turn on an option called contact point boundary. I'm gonna enable that. I'm gonna let my mouse hover for a minute. Again, wait for that uh, tool tip to come out. And when it does, you can see in the top graphic what's happening. When it's disabled, when the, tip, when the center line of the tool gets to the center of the boundary, it can't go any farther. And you can see that exact example that we just saw where it's not machining the entire surface. When we enable the contact point boundary, it lets the tangent of the tool maintain contact with any part of that surface, even if the center line of the tool has to go outside of the boundary. We specified tool center on boundary, but with this enable, it, it allows the tool center to go outside the boundary, but it doesn't allow uh, the tangent of the tool to break contact with that surface. So the tangent of the tool has to stay in contact with the surface that we're uh, talking about. And then the bottom graphic, if I pop that back up again, you can see when it's disabled, the tool rides over the top and machines on top of the part. When we enable it, it again doesn't let the tangent of the tool break contact with the surface that we specified with our boundary. So we will just turn that on and now let's go ahead and click okay. And if we look at this, the toolpath is certainly going farther down. So let's go ahead and simulate this and go find a spot to put that on there. Look at that from the front view. And you can see that clearly the tool's going uh, past that, but we're really getting a, a fairly noisy and ugly toolpath. And in, in fact, in some points, it's, it's going way outside of that, you know, kind of the boundary that I wanted to do. So let's talk about why that's happening. I'm gonna edit this parallel and I'm gonna to go to the Passes tab. You can see that there's a tolerance listed here. Uh, there's a tolerance of four tenths for this particular operation. And what happens when we generate this 3D tool path, Fusion takes our perfectly uh, B rep surface or boundary representation surface that's mathematically calculated and turns it into something called an STL file. If you've ever seen STL files, we commonly use these in 3D printing. It takes all the surfaces and turns them into triangular faces. So all these surfaces are going to be represented by flat triangular faces. Uh, but these triangles can never deviate more than four tenths of an inch from the original surface that we're looking at. So to demonstrate what's happening here, I have another file. I've taken this model and I've exported it out as an STL file. And I've reopened that STL file back into Fusion. So this is what the STL file would look like that Fusion is, is using to generate the toolpath. You can see the top surface is made out of two triangles, the side surface is made out of two triangles, the left, right, and bottom are both made out of two triangles. And then as we look at this uh, radius edge, we see lots of triangles around there. And then this angled surface is also made up of a lot of triangles. Um, so instead of this being a nice curved edge, we're getting a bunch of little tiny line segments. And I have one more thing we can look at to kind of demonstrate this again a little bit more. I want to go to this AutoCAD file, and uh, I have a representation here of kind of what's happening. So you can see I have a, a cyan color representing the perfect mathematical geometry of the model, and I have this magenta line representing the uh, STL file tolerance. Now, obviously, I have this way over exaggerated just so you guys can kind of see what's going on. And you can see there's certain points where the boundaries overlap, and there's a spot where the tool can kind of poke its head through there. And, uh, and poke down. Now it won't violate the model, but it, it will kind of give us an uglier looking toolpath. Luckily, there's an easy way we can go ahead and uh, cure that problem. So we're gonna switch back over to Fusion and go back to our original file. I'm gonna edit this toolpath one more time and go to the Passes tab. 
on the passes tab, we see that we have a tolerance. And if I hold my shift button down before I get to that field and I mouse over that, a pop-up is gonna come and let me know some of the uh, parameters that are being used for this tolerance field. So first of all, this, this menu option is called tolerance. And a couple things, you can see that the value is set to four tenths and it has a parameter name of tolerance with a small letter T. So let's go back to the geometry tab now that we keep this tolerance value in mind. What I can do in this additional offset is I can type in a negative tolerance that's equal to what I have in the passes tab. So I could come in here and type in minus point zero 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 four and type that static value in, although there's an easier way to get around doing that because if I ever go back and update that tolerance, I have to remember to go and change it in the additional offset field. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my negative sign and then I'm gonna type in the parameter name, which was small letters tolerance. And now you can see it under, Fusion understands what that value is because the, the, the text is black. If I were to do a capital T, you can see everything turns red because Fusion doesn't understand what the value tolerance is because that's not a parameter name it knows about. So we'll do the small letter T. Now I have that small, uh, small uh, negative tolerance is what I have listed. And when I click OK, you're going to see that toolpath now looks pretty nice. Everything is pretty clean on there. So let's simulate it and make sure we get the results we want. So we'll come over and grab it at the top. Now let's look at it from the side. You can see the tangent of the tool is staying in contact with that surface, but it's not riding over the edge. So that looks great. And let's come and grab a different point down here. Put our mouse there. Look at it from the side again. You can see the tangent of the tool again is going all the way down to the bottom. Even though the tool is going off the center line of the part of the boundary that we specified, but that's okay because we, we use that contact point boundary option to do that. So that's the quick and easy way generally to fix these tool paths so that it covers the entire surface that you want to and you don't have any additional tool path noise or anything like that. <clears throat> now that we've shown you the right way to do this, one of the common answers I, I see posted in the forums a lot is to just add an additional positive uh, offset. So if I go to the geometry tab, I could add an additional positive offset. Let's use half the diameter of the tool. So we'll go 0.25 and we'll choose OK. And this is the reason why I don't like to do this because now you can see the tool is machining a bunch of stuff I don't want it to. In order to fix this problem, I have to edit it, go to the geometry tab and use the avoid surfaces option and click on all the surfaces that I don't want this tool path to touch and hit OK. And now we're back to the exact same result we got when we use contact point boundary. So the right way to do this is to use the contact point boundary option with a negative tolerance value set and you should get a nice clean and quick tool path to create to do surfaces like this. I hope that helped to uh, understand what's happening in the background as we calculate 3D tool paths in Fusion. If you found this video useful, it would be great if you subscribe and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see if we can get them addressed. So thanks for watching and have a great day.